this is? Holiday Inn? So you don't want to hear their bullshit. Sir, yes, sir. Sir, yes, sir. I want to hear their bullshit, sir. This is in high school. If you're not going to take it serious, then you're going to end up locked up again. You don't want to take responsibility for your actions. If we help you, it's a horrible situation. No I hate when someone tells me mean, what I'm doing wrong, what I'm bad at. Those kids lifestyle will change. It's hard to take. We're in Mariah Shock Prison, New York State. The special feature, no fences, no barbed wire, no locks. Instead, rigorous military drills. The prisoners could escape at any time, but they don't. How does the prison without walls work? 5.30 a.m. Time to wake up. 15 minutes later, the 300 inmates have to work out, like soldiers, every day for two hours. New in prison, Thomas Eisenberger. He's in for drug trafficking. Every minute here, a challenge for the 35-year-old. When I first got here, the, the, the PT was a little, a, little, a little hard. I would personally never run away. Military drill instead of prison walls. Eisenberger deliberately chose this. Like everyone else, he had a choice in court. Several years in jail or six months at Mariah Shock. Eisenberger hopes to be reprogrammed. The drill takes its toll. He needs his energy. There's a tough test ahead. What the drill can achieve is best shown by Brian Colon. He's been here for five months. The system has turned him upside down. I feel great, man. Beautiful morning. Close to going home. Getting my mind and my body right. Can't ask for anything more right now. Well, it's like medicine. Sometimes medicine tastes nasty, but it makes you feel better. Drill instructor Dave Adams' task, making the prisoners compliant. The objective, blind obedience. Physical training starts at day, all right? Get some motivated. Second platoon, full out. Sir. 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 Quickly. They get excited about PT. Not so much in the beginning when we first start the program, but after they've been here about a month, six weeks, they look forward to it. Second platoon, you look forward to PT. Sir. Second platoon, what about PT? Tone of the day. They like it. Six months of military style drill is too hard for many. 20% of the inmates drop out and voluntarily go to the normal jail. The others have to push through and hope to be better people after six months. After two hours of physical training, the inmates are allowed to have breakfast. One of three meals a day. They have exactly 15 minutes. Every day, they get the same menu. Two glasses of milk, coffee, potatoes, cornflakes, a banana. Everything the men do is carefully coordinated to the smallest detail. No walls in jail. This works only through coordination. Nobody is allowed to step out of line. No walls also means no privacy. Eisenberger lives along with 45 other inmates in the same room. The reason behind this? Mutual control. And it works, because if an inmate is messy, everyone gets punished. A lot of my fellow peers' lockers are a little higher and tighter than mine. They, they make this look a lot sharper than I do. I do well. I pass my evals, so I'm doing good. But it can, it can look a lot better than this. It can also look a lot worse. Just like in other jails, there are no personal belongings. So I knew it was coming, no packages, nothing like that. It's, these are my personal belongings, that's what I accept. In a few hours, Eisenberger will face a tribunal. He doesn't know about it yet. Eight o'clock, time to raise the flag. Organized into various platoons, the prisoners have to stand upright for an hour each day, without even moving a finger. While they do so, freedom is always present. The smallest mistakes are immediately dealt with by the sergeants. So he was touching himself, even with bugs and stuff like that, they got to maintain the military. 
For newcomers like Eisenberger, it's hard to keep his nerve. So whenever drone instructors come around, someone says, you, why are you moving? I'm locked up even tighter, hoping it wasn't me that was moving. Was I moving? Am I moving? Am I doing something wrong? You're asking yourself these questions while you're worried about getting corrective PT. Some punishments are borderline bullying, or they seem deliberately arbitrary. The sergeants first have to break the inmates in order to transform them. Everything matters. Everything, every little thing matters. They're at parade rest. They can, they're not supposed to move around. Attention! The eyes report! As a reminder, all inmates are here voluntarily, hoping to become better people in six months. But not every offender can apply. The prisoners in Mariah are petty criminals and don't have a history of violent crime. Therapy is also part of the program. Here, inmates are to tear down their personal walls. They shouldn't have secrets. Prison veteran Brian Colon has to deal with his past drug abuse today and open up about the darkest chapter in his life. Colon did and sold heroin. He spent five years in a normal jail. But the time was more a swampland of temptation than of improvement for the 39-year-old. In real prison, there is no caring community. There's probably more drugs in prison than in the outside world. There's more violence in prison than anywhere else in the world. The, the staff here is phenomenal. They genuinely care. They may come down on you hard, but it's all because they see in you what you should see in yourself. I've become a better me every way, in every way possible. Colon wants to become a better person at any cost. Escape from the prison without walls, not an option. Never thought about leaving, never thought about quitting. If anything, every day I try a little bit harder. Feet. Brian appears to us as an honest guy, but also robotic. The shock program changed him. Every day, a bit more. We discussed how security is ensured with Superintendent Rawson Boyce. Since the founding of Mariah in the 1980s, he significantly influenced the prison. There are certain criteria that they have to meet before they're sent to a correctional setting that doesn't have a fence. There's also several counts and there's several security measures that we take. Hardly anyone relapses and it's cheaper. The shock program saves up to $20,000 per inmate. By comparison, in Germany, sooner or later every second inmate relapses and ends up back behind bars. In this setting also, the inmate has the advantage of going home in six months rather than being incarcerated for his entire state bid. So the inmates don't want to jeopardize that. The huge reduction in the prison sentence keeps most of them from running away. In the morning, the risk of escaping is at its highest. The inmates perform charitable work in the next town. Today, I believe we're going to clean up some campsites. It's 11 o'clock. Without shackles, in an unsecured van, Eisenberg's group is on its way. The destination? A campsite 10 kilometers away, in the middle of an idyllic national park. Only three guards to look after the 10 inmates on the large site. Unarmed as well. A great moment to make a break. For Eisenberger, however, the thought never crosses his mind. I, I, would, I would personally never run away. There's too much at stake. I was sentenced to five years. This shed's almost 30 months off my sentence to come out here and, I mean, rake and on the edge of this lake and look at these mountains and it's a blessing in disguise. I'm, I'm thankful to be here. Only two people have fled in the prison's entire history in a situation like this one at work. Both were caught and sent to normal jail. Time for dinner. Pasta, peas, white bread, a yogurt and a glass of milk are being brought to the table. The most important thing now is food, because after 10 hours of continuous drill, the prisoners have been pushed to their limits. And even then, the sergeants don't back down. 
Eisenberger has to adjust to the pressure. We only have eight minutes to eat, so the, the key is to shovel it in as fast as I can. The short amount of time isn't the only thing adding pressure on the inmates, especially when the guards spoil their meal. Where did that go? Sir, from the pocket, sir. Why isn't it in there? Sir, no excuse, sir. That's right. Enjoy your meal on the back wall. Sir, yes, sir. See ya. This inmate thinks that it's reasonable because all of my fellow peers and myself, we, we know what we're doing wrong. So it'll make us not, it'll make us not do it again next time. Yeah. Are these antics really necessary? We talk to one of the guards. The discipline here for the very small things is the small things make the big things come together in the end, and we create structure. Which means the guards educate the prisoners for everyday life, even at the dinner table. Newcomer Eisenberger looks pretty exhausted. There's no private time at all. It's very exhausting, mentally challenging. Eisenberger still has the biggest challenge of his day ahead of him. After dinner, this means surrendering to the conflict course. Inmates tear down walls amongst themselves. They even drill criticism, all against one. If you're the one in the pillory, you're not allowed to defend yourself. When we sit down here in this group, we have to air each other's issues and shortcomings and defects of character. It's a horrible situation. Today is Eisenberger's turn for his first run in the hot seat. His platoon has a lot to say. He seems to be far down the group's hierarchy. Now he has to deal with the criticism. You're a whole new person. I can barely talk to you. You're too busy running around politicking of the shock program. You're extremely loud out there. You're the house mouse. Which seems somewhat aggressive still. You're just working on the surface. Eisenberger has to bear it all. Only when all the inmates have had their turn to speak is he allowed to justify himself, but not before the drill sergeants speak. They said you wanted to be our friend. You want to shoot the willy with me? Sir, no, Iman Eisenberg does not want to be your friend, sir. Good, I don't want to be your friend. Iman Eisenberg was asked by his platoon leader to help with issues that are involved in the platoon, dress code, locking up on time. Eisenberger begins ranting. But the sergeants are only expecting short apologies. Thank you for helping out. I don't want to hear their bullshit. Sir, yes, sir. Sir, yes, sir. I don't want to hear their bullshit, sir. You take what he's saying, serious. This isn't high school. If you're not going to take it serious, then you're going to end up locked up again. You don't want to take responsibility for your actions. If you change, you become a better person. You're going to be having quiet time. My favorite time. The conflict course is over. You know, I'm mad at myself. I'm upset with myself. I need to slow down more. And this program is helping me with patience. I'm, I'm very, you know, positive. And All right, Paige. Forward, march. Lock it up for your lockers. 9.30 p.m. Lockdown. The prison without walls, a tough drill and the hope for a better life. Nobody thinks about leaving. <laughs>